Another quiet night driving home. The sky above you is pitch black and it's been a long time since you saw any other signs of life. The road through the woods is a little rough, but there's something about the trees that surround you that's somehow comforting. They stand silent, grouped together, as though they're making a barrier all around you. Somewhere through them, though, somewhere the solid wall of trunks, branches, and leaves, the swamp is lying all around, similarly silent. There's plenty of people who kind of find this area creepy. They listen to the old tales, and they start to think that they see things watching them just hidden from view, but the only concern you have is getting to where you're going and the bed that's calling your name. The bang from underneath you is sudden and immediate. The car veers to the right, even as you correct it and keep your headlights facing forwards, cutting through the gloom you can sense with a sinking feeling that your tire has blown. As the speed drops and you come to a halt, the telltale noises are all there. The car comes to a standstill and with the turn of the key the engine dies. Silence all around, other than the choice words being screamed in your head. It would have to happen as far from help as possible. Couldn't it have happened in town? No, that would be far too convenient. As you climb out to inspect the damage, you have a look around just in case there happens to be someone to help. No such luck. Nothing else for it, might as well grab the tire iron and get to work. It's gone midnight and every clank of metal on the asphalt echoes all around. Your breath rises up in front of you as you struggle with the lug nuts. It's only when you take a breather that you hear it. Distant and barely noticeable, but it was definitely a footstep. Who would be out walking at this time? Doesn't matter. It'll help, and regardless of who it is or why they're there, it'll get you back on the road sooner. But there is no one in sight up or down the road. It's clearer now. A second footstep. Somewhere through the gloom, and then a third almost straight afterwards. They're coming more frequently now, at a pace that sounds almost like running. A walker at this time would be very unlikely. A runner, even weirder. It's hard to tell which way the sounds are coming from, but it's getting closer. Up ahead, a silhouette starts to form through the mist, a dark outline getting clearer by the second, bringing the thump of feet onto the road closer and louder with it. He is running, and he's coming straight to you. There's barely enough time to breathe a sigh of relief before it catches your throat. Whoever it is looks big, like impractically big, taller than seems possible. Every step is bringing them into focus as they rapidly close the gap, and this is not just someone jogging, they are full on sprinting. The outline is sharp now, and there is just something that looks off with it. Relief turns to panic, it is no longer someone there that feels like they're there to help, it feels like you've ended up as prey. Jumping back into the car and locking the door, you keep watch out of the windshield as this thing sprints towards the vehicle. Its skin looks scaly and slimy. It easily stands seven feet tall and its red eyes are full of nothing but rage. When it reaches the car, it begins to attack it, fighting the metal box around you as though it was desperate to get inside and get a hold of you. Long black claws tearing and gouging, the sound of metal scraping and pieces of the exterior falling to the ground. Your only hope is that the windows and locks hold, and that somehow it loses interest and leaves you alone. If you get out of this alive, you know that no one is ever going to believe you. And whether they do or don't, you're never driving on that road alone at night again. Well, you, my friend, have just encountered the Lizard Man of Scape or Swamp. Located in Lee County, South Carolina, around the area of Bishopville, the woods and the Scape or Swamp in particular saw a spat of encounters with an aggressive, destructive, and truly bizarre creature in the late 80s and beyond. And today, we're going to go over some of the accounts of these victims and what they gave, the damage allegedly caused by this legendary cryptid, and look at all the proof provided to try and work out for ourselves exactly what the Lizard Man of Scape or Swamp is, and really just how plausible we really think this is. The fictionalized account in the introduction is actually based on what is generally accepted as the first encounter that someone had with the Lizard Man. The young man in question was named Christopher Davis, and on June 29th of 1988, he reported being attacked by the creature. He was driving back from work in the vicinity of the swamp in the early hours of the morning where he suffered a flat tire. Once he got out to try to change it, his claim is that he was attacked by this creature. Now obviously, he escaped physically unharmed and made his way back to town. The description he gave of the Lizard Man would establish all of the key elements that would seem consistent in later encounters. The first is the impressive height of the creature. All eyewitness accounts agree that it is somewhere in the region of 7 feet tall, well over 2 meters, which is basically the height of Master Chief in full Mjolnir armor. Also, because we're kind of a nerd on this channel by the way if you didn't know, but he also described the Lizard Man as being extremely quick and brutally strong, capable of causing extensive damage to his vehicle even from the outside. The tools that he uses to attack vehicles are described as long black claws on his hands, or at least where he should have hands. In addition, he seems to have only three digits on both his hands and feet, more than enough for sustaining these attacks, as well as pads on the palms, which is theorized to be utilized for climbing the various trees around the area for the purpose of either escape or for keeping an eye on any that are brave enough to travel through his area. 
Another key element seems to be the distinctive glowing red eyes. When all of this is put together, it creates a fairly terrifying mental image. One that's bad enough to create intrigue and interest in not only the area, but bring others who claim to have encountered the mythical beast. It should be said that this initial reaction was not treated with any level of suspicion and eye rolling. In fact, the local police took it fairly seriously. They conducted a full investigation and when the report began to become public knowledge, others would come forward with their own stories of encounters. One of the first things that people began to look into was a spat of petty vandalism that seemed to have been occurring at least in late summer. Multiple vehicles that were left overnight around the area had suffered some damage when the owners returned. Things like scratches, the aerials or antennas being ripped off, and the wing mirrors broken. While this had been put down to citizens with malicious intent or even attacks by wildlife such as bears, the story beginning to take shape, these were being reassessed. Suddenly, these went from simple criminal damages to potentially proof that the lizard man was freely roaming the area and seemed to have a special hatred for all things metallic and vehicular. As the first person to have a face-to-face -face interaction, Christopher's story blew up. He took and then passed the lie detector test, seemingly proving that he was telling the truth about what had happened to him that night. Interest began to grow with the added attention and more people seemed to both come up to the area and the generating buzz kind of started self-sustaining. A radio station even offered a seven-figure sum for the capture of the creature and while this was never claimed or paid out, it just goes to show that regardless of what the general opinion was regarding the truth of the story, there were suddenly a lot of eyes on this area. A footprint was actually found by the police when they were conducting their investigations and has been described as in some sources as being three-toed, 14 inches long. A description that doesn't match any known animals that would be expected in the area at this time or at least according to local experts. But then there was another first-hand encounter. Kenneth Orr would have his own interaction with the Lizard Man, and one that was far more explosive than either like random car damage or full frontal assault over a blown tire. He claimed that when he came across it, just off the highway, he managed to shoot and wound it. He even provided evidence of the occasion, producing scales that he claimed to have been shed by the monster when he shot as well as at least some blood. However, when the report gained traction, a number of issues came up, and initially, they were about more than just the truth of the encounter. The first point of interest for the police was not that he may or may not have seen. Instead, it was the fact that he was not legally entitled to be carrying a firearm in the first place that he claimed to use to shoot the creature. When law enforcement pointed this out to him, as well as the legal repercussions of filing false reports, he immediately went back on his story and said that he had just made it up. He claimed it was done to keep interest in the story about the creature. Skeptics, though, point out this proof as like, there's a lot of evidence around the lizard man and how it's supposedly all fabricated. Hardcore truthers may simply see it as a man walking back the truth to save his own skin. Even as late as 2018, there were reports coming in that were being attributed to the work of the lizard man. Some was car damage, like what has he got against cars? I don't know. And a trail of blood even made the news with a major cable network. All it did was renew the interest in the community about this creature. The fact that the blood was examined and determined to be either from like a dog or a coyote never quite made the same headline splash, however. But what else do those that are skeptical of this creature really have to say on the matter? Well, it would appear quite a lot. The first thing they tend to point to is the lack of distinct physical evidence. These apparent footprints that were molded and analyzed by a biologist as not belonging to any known creature, the ones that were never sent to the FBI even though they apparently toyed with the idea at the time, well, those who aren't convinced about the lizard man's existence are highly skeptical of them. They question if they are actually even real at all, and if they are, they may belong to a known animal. And even if they didn't, surely you would submit them for further analysis to be studied, right? They argue with some merit that there's something about this that doesn't quite add up. When it comes to those that have had first-hand experiences with the creature, they suggest a number of possibilities or some combination of many. The initial encounter, as experienced by Christopher, has basically come under uh, partial scrutiny. One theory is that there was a local man who lived nearby who was out at an ungodly hour surveying his property that he had suffered theft recently. He went to provide assistance to the stricken young man, and when he saw or heard his car stopping, for whatever reason, panicked and drove off. This alternate theory, however, has never really been proven. Some go down a much simpler and more straightforward route. The car had already suffered damage to its tire. What if the young man had simply come off the road and somehow in his car kind of messed things up? Bad enough to cause some damage, but not bad enough to scrap the vehicle or hurt himself. Is it possible that behind the genesis of this local legend, there's really just a person who was unwilling to admit that they damaged their vehicle through more conventional means and invented a tall tale to try to explain it all the way? And while the polygraph test 
test that Christopher took is touted heavily by believers. It is also true that the police force seemed to believe that at best, what if he had encountered was just a bear or some other more pedestrian form of wildlife? Uh, those who are doubtful also point out that there are elements to the story that have in fact changed over time, despite the claim that his tale has stayed consistent throughout. And remember this, a lot of people seem to think that polygraph tests are like the end all be all, but they're actually not admissible in court as evidence. So. It's because there's a lot of issues with them. Skeptics also look at the next few reported encounters and point out that they weren't really encounters at all. They were damaged cars and ones that suffered this damage while the owners had left them parked up near the swamp. Had this happened to anybody anywhere else at any other time, then there is a chance that the name of the lizard man would have never even been suggested when it like, came to be possible theories of what may have happened. The first thoughts would have been far more pedestrian, vandalism, sheer bad luck, or just a bear attack. A lot of people don't realize this, but there are bears in swamps. They live out there. That's kind of their thing. So there is a strong implication here that if the lizard man never existed at all, as some claim, then no one would have ever begun to consider it as an option when it came to these things. And while there was a spat of these events that were happening, I guess, all over, it needs to be noted that they occurred almost exclusively over the same summer as the first encounter. No explanations have ever been offered by enthusiasts and believers as to why the lizard man lay dormant in the swamp for time unknown, decided to terrify the public for one random summer in 1988, and then faded back to obscurity for nearly 30 years. Years. But what about the most common forms of evidence that believers tend to use in order to prove the existence of their own pet creature? Where are the pictures and the videos? There is one paragraph produced as recently as 2015 that alleges to have captured the suddenly shy creature. However, it is fairly blurry and indistinct where it's like pretty hard to make out what exactly is being pictured. A silhouette somewhere in a tree line, some indistinct shape through the woods. To believers, this is proof that the lizard man is alive and kicking, lurking out there in the backwoods. To skeptics, it's a grainy photograph that proves exactly nothing. So it wouldn't be technically true to say that none exist, but they are few and far between, and all seem to have been filmed with the same blurry filter that all cryptid spotters appear to use. Like, their cameras become potatoes as soon as they see something. So overall, while there seems to have been a fair bit of belief and some regular sightings back in the late 80s, this one feels a bit more like of an unknown wild tale, but one that has been embraced by the locals. There are people within the community that have leaned into this myth and the legend of the lizard man to varying degrees. The societies that they have set up and the same statue erected of him are two clear examples of it. Regardless of how they feel about the chances of this mythical being haunting the swamp nearby, lurking in the woods and sneaking up on stranded motorists, they have realized its true value. Whether it's real or not, it's hard to deny that the Lizard Man of Scape or Lake has achieved legendary status with the local residents and a reputation that extends far beyond that. And despite his allegedly destructive and aggressive nature, there have been multiple separate efforts to ensure that his status is maintained. Like I said, the statue that was erected in his likeness, and there's even uh, that society that was created specifically to just celebrate his existence. Like, is everybody okay over there? So he has made his way into official posts by government bodies when they were providing advice to citizens about the upcoming solar eclipse. The society has dedicated his story with members far beyond the local area. It's pretty expansive. Uh, the Friends of the Lizard Man is a community that was started in 2019 and has grown to an extent that they host annual events. There are stalls, merchandise to purchase, and even a parade. People come from all over and celebrate the legend that may or may not be lurking in or around Scape or Swamp and the lake within. And that's where we will leave the Lizard Man of Scape or Swamp. From his sudden, violent, and headline-grabbing arrival in the summer of 88 through his current status as a point of interest in the country and a source of strange pride for the locals, what do we really think is like the likelihood that the Lizard Man is or was ever real? Now, in the dinosaur era, I don't know, maybe a Velociraptor decided to become somewhat of a Lizard Man. But in the vast majority of cases, the answer is always the same. Here's what people say, here's the evidence that believers believe, and here's what those who doubt it point out. Make your own mind up with that. And while the same formula could be applied here, there does seem to be an added wrinkle to it. The reality, at least in the modern era, is that even those who seem to believe the most in the legend, the ones that start the societies and build statues of them, are not entirely sincere in their belief. It feels as though there is not only a general acceptance the story is a little off the wall, it feels like more people have just kind of leaned into it. People have adopted, preserved, and pushed the story more precisely because they realize just how outlandish it is. And it's like an end joke, I guess you could say. They know that the tourists know that it's probably not real, but everyone sees it for what it is. For those that make 
the pilgrimage to the area and buy the t-shirts. It's just a bit of fun. A good story to listen to and creepy prospect to consider for those to embrace the story has really become a part of their local history. A key proponent of lore that has arguably put their location on the map. And it's hard to say if there's anything wrong with that. After all, what difference would it make if hard evidence ever came out to prove or disprove the lizard man? And I think, I don't know, I think the hard evidence is that it just doesn't exist. But we would argue that if, now uh, we, some of us might argue that it really wouldn't matter one bit. It is and would remain a great story that has been passed down in the local area and beyond. One that has brought eyes to the footfall of this town and the surrounding area. And if the lizard man was ever to walk out of the swamp and make his way to the center of town, it would be worth seeing the confusion as he looked up at the merchandise with his face on it and stories about his escapades and a three foot tall statue of himself in pride of place. Although, given his track record with cars, he'd probably just gouge a hole in it. Either way, if you get a blowout on the back roads of Lee County and all you can see are woodlands and swamps, uh, maybe just call AAA, just in case. But anyhow, I want to thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, then leave a like would be great, and subscribe is a great way to stay up to date on when I post. If you want me to look into anything, just leave a comment below and I will check it out. Uh, I would also like to thank my patrons real quick. At the literal Wendigo tier, we have Grayson West, Stupid Fox, and Trash Panda in a trench coat. Thank you guys. At the Eyewitness to the Event tier, we have Beaver Malone and Wet Skeleton, which gets me every time. Gross name. At the first-hand accounts, we have Cody Cherry Drake and Yeeps. And at the second-hand accounts, we have Bianca, Kanan Johnson, Fred Rush, and Troy. And to the rest of my patrons, I appreciate you guys as well. Your help goes a long way towards keeping this channel running and is greatly appreciated. All right, so that's going to do it for me. I hope everyone enjoyed, and I'll see y'all in the next one.